racism of the gaps. The favorite counterargument, fallacy, fallacy, that uh, conservatives like wheeling out in discussions of systemic racism and stuff like that. And basically, the argument can be summarized as follows. Or the fallacy, sorry. If there are disparate outcomes amongst racial groups, that can be used to infer biased societal treatment against such racial groups. And, you know, what's it called? Uh, conservatives think of this as a fallacy. They think that, hey, just because there are racially disparate outcomes amongst racial groups, that doesn't mean that there is racially disparate treatment or that systemic racism exists. Now, I'm going to be making the argument for why this actually isn't a fallacy at all, and that there is only one premise that needs to be granted for us to consider this as a non-fallacious argument to be made, the racism of the gaps. Now, let's look at limitations, okay? I'm going to say this at the very beginning, because if I say this at the end, which was my original plan, people are going to write this in the comments uh, and be like, I'm always interested in consider this, so I'm saying it now. Just I'm spoon-feeding you. So the limitations of the racism of the gaps argument it, uh, is that it cannot pinpoint like a specific source of racially biased treatment. That cannot be done. It can be used for a very macro lens of analysis to which you detect that there is some form of racially biased treatment occurring, but it cannot pinpoint what the racially biased treatment is. And if the racism of the gaps argument is used in like a very small situation or analyzing something very specific, like let's say the criminal justice system, that can't be used to infer like bias on the part of the criminal justice system itself. It will once again only show the overall societal bias that exists. Um, so that's argument number one. It has some value in being able to, on a macro level, recognize the existence of systemic racism, as I will explain in a bit, but it doesn't pinpoint where that is coming from. And yeah, and that's also another limitation is when you're talking about policy proposals specifically, that argument is not super helpful. However, if you're in a debate about whether or not systemic racism exists, then it's a helpful argument. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about it. So there is one premise that needs to be agreed upon for the argument to be considered like, you know, like valid and sound, uh, which is that um, this is right now, according to the academic and scientific consensus on the topic, true. Um, there are no inherent differences between races that would causatively lead to disparate societal outcomes, especially not to the degree that we see today. So what we mean by this is that, um, hey, so while there might be some disparate outcomes when it comes to certain diseases, like I think skin cancer, obviously that makes more sense, but even kidney cancer, um, like these things lead to kind of disparate outcomes. But when it comes to the important things like income, education, and intelligence, there is no evidence to support those forms of like inferences from you know like the given statements that have been made there um so and that specifically in, in that specific case it's not the case we do see like some marginal differences like here and there but even in those situations if you're talking about skin cancer and kidney cancer assuming that there's equal access to like quality like healthcare, the survival rate is equal even though certain um certain like you know groups of people may be more predisposed towards catching it in the first place so that's also like puts another like i suppose a cog in the wheel um for that given argument um so yeah that's the one premise that there are no inherent differences between races that would causatively lead to disparate societal incomes when it comes to things like income education and intelligence especially not to the degree that we see today now hey looks like we're talking a bit about like you know race realist stuff here and hey i can Tell some of you, maybe to your dismay or maybe to your happiness, that there is some, uh, some, you know, some race realist counter content coming up soon to the channel. So look forward to that, I guess, if that's something that interests you. Now, so what does this mean? So assuming that the premises are sound, which they are, um, this must mean that the statistically significant racially disparate outcomes are caused by something societal, some treatment. Because what the premise basically establishes is that at the end of the day, like we are sort of like like shells, I guess. Like we are humans and we are sort of colored in by the environments around us. And it's the environment that fundamentally have the like predictive effect when it comes to our outcomes in life as a whole. And especially when we're talking about the things that are most relevant to systemic racism, such as wealth gaps and stuff, for instance. So assuming that we know that that's the case, then the only reason why there are dis there should be discrepancies and especially statistically significant ones between different groups in society, especially racial groups, would be because of some form of environmental treatment. Because assuming conditions were the same and assuming the premise that we talked about before, we shouldn't see any statistically significant 
like differences when it comes to the performance of these given, um, you know, like races in a society. The reason why the statistical significance is important is because, hey, given any data set, even if they have like two groups with the same mean and you just randomly like randomize them and see where the outcomes are, there's going to be some difference there, but there should be, they should be like not statistically significantly different there, which is why that's something that's very important. And boy, do we know that the outcomes in society today are very, very different and are very, very clearly pronounced. So for instance, there is this report here by the Brookings Institute where they talk a bit about wealth levels in society. And there's a lot of interesting stuff to talk about here. So here are the median net worth by race and ethnicity uh, from 1986 to 2016. So you can see, you know, like the different, uh, different like races here and then black at the very bottom here. Uh, now people will say, well, you know, when it comes to like family and net worth and stuff like that, hey, you know, things like age probably has a really big important part to play in it and, uh, and white people are average older so they would have more wealth. Well, there's adjustments for that too, which is, uh, I think it's here where it's adjusted for by age. And even then we do see the general trend of the older you get, the more wealth you have. But even in this situation, the wealth gaps are still fucking massive. Um, so that critique doesn't necessarily like have any important effect here. And then, yeah, here is the, uh, the median net worth by household income percentile. So per like percentage of like, you know, people with a given household income, this is how much net worth the average household has. And as you can see on every level, um, the white household wealth is like, is magnitudes, uh, bigger and more ahead of the, the black household wealth and all these given instances. So basically what this proves is, Hey, Assuming that there are no inherent differences between races that would causatively lead to disparate societal outcomes, especially not to the degree that we see today, which is the case given the available consensus and evidence we have on like genetics and stuff within race. Um, it stands to reason then that the massive discrepancies that we see right now in society when it comes to the experience and the performance between different racial groups in society as a whole is because of something societal some need that isn't being met or some like disparate treatment that is being enacted upon these groups of people. Um, so this basically proves the point of systemic or structural racism. Now, if you want to call systemic or structural racism or like systemic disenfranchisement or, you know, systemic disenfranchisement, whatever you want to call structural disenfranchisement, uh, I don't care. I care about providing like the concept here um, for me to you. So if you take issues with any of the words, well, okay. I care about the concept on the other day, which is basically, by virtue of largely unaddressed racially disparate treatment, black Americans face relatively poor outcomes in the current day in comparison to other racial groups. So while, hey, um, we can't pinpoint what the causes of it is with this argument, we can make like educated guesses, like for example, like slavery, segregation, redlining, etc., have an important part to play. And that these like initial discrepancies in wealth are sustained by basic economic principles. So by things like economic mobility across generations, basically the wealth of your parents are gonna have a predictive effect on your own wealth and your ability to accumulate wealth throughout your lifetime. Things like the Matthew effect, where wealth tends to accumulate more wealth and poverty tends to lead to more poverty or just being poor in general tends to lead to like remaining poor. Um, and then the causative effect on wealth and societal outcomes. So just being wealthy gives you advantages when it comes to basically like everything in society. You, you get to strain your eyes less. You know, that's an advantage that poor people have over rich people, okay? Your eyes, you have to strain them less when you open up your bank accounts because there aren't as many, like, pixelated numbers to read and register. Because if you're poor, then there are probably less numbers. So your eye health probably is a bit better in that given case. So, yeah, I guess that's, that's one of the, you know, disadvantages of being wealthy, having to strain your eyes that little bit more because you have to read a lot more numbers when you look at your bank account or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's the whole thing about racism of the gaps. So while sometimes it is fair to say that the racism of the gaps argument is fallacious, if you're having like a specific discussion about, hey, is this facet of society like racially biased or is there racially disparate treatment within this facet of society? And then if you apply racism of the gaps there, it's not going to be reflective because there are other sort of like parallel institutions and structures, which might be the reason why there are disparate outcomes in the one you're investigating right now. So just because there are differences in the sort of institution that you're investigating then doesn't mean that it's that inst uh, like invest uh, institution that is the, the root cause of that discrepancy. But as long as you use it on a macro perspective in debates when you're trying to ascertain whether or not systemic or structural racism is real or that it exists, the racism of the gaps argument is important here.
Because practically, hey, the only other argument that could be made here, the only way out of this argument would be an argument that there are inherent causative differences between races that lead to disparate societal outcomes. And that's the reason why we see the discrepancies that we see today, or that is a part of play in it. That's the only way out of this argument. That's the only way out of the argument that in some way, in some form, society as a whole has failed these group of people, um, like relative to other groups of people. And hey, if you want to run down that argument, um, first of all, you're wrong, but that's something that we're going to be doing now going forward a bit on this channel. We're opening a, a bit of a, another chapter now, almost a year since the... Uh, the uh, the all type debates. We're now opening up the the Pandora's box into seeing how the race realist arguments have uh, have evolved since then, and we're gonna have more videos on that coming out soon. So that's why there isn't a great deal of time spent towards proving that point here. Number one because it's consensus, but number two because it's not really the point of the topic, and it will be covered in other videos coming up. As the mentored game show host uh, pointed out, we can call like the systemic racism kind of like whatever we want to really, as long as the concept is getting through. So maybe if the term systemic racism implies too heavily that there is still like current like well there is, but that the concept in itself requires some forms of like current persistent like racist pressures that exist right now. Maybe a word like you know, uh, systemic poverty can be a better word by which to describe the phenomenon we we're talking about. And systemic poverty disproportionately affects racial minorities because racial minorities have had troubles accumulating wealth in the past on account of racist treatment and racist policies in the past. So that's probably another way to look at it, which may be like, you know, more acceptable, I guess, uh, you know, changing the words a bit, curtailing the words um, to uh, to make sure that it's easier to understand. So, yeah, we can call systemic racism, structural racism, systemic disenfranchisement, uh, structural disenfranchisement, systemic poverty, structural poverty, and the people that are most affected by the structural and systemic poverty would be then minority groups and racial minority groups who have had like downward pressures on their ability to build wealth on account of racist policies on the past so yeah that's racism of the gaps it makes sense it's a good argument it's a valid argument if you're looking from a macro societal perspective and you're trying to ascertain or prove whether or not systemic and structural racism exists however don't invoke it when trying to figure out if one specific facet or element of society is contributing to that disparity because in that situations the only result you will get is still indicative of broader societal disadvantages rather than disadvantages within that sole given institution or facet of society. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would uh, I would steal man racism of the gaps here a little bit and uh, provide a context in which it can be used, uh, you know, in a sound and valid way. But yeah, thank you.